Yeah, so I'm going to Cantor. Uh, I spoke yesterday about the ZFS capacity usage simulator thing. I work at Joyan. Um, stand up. Oh, the, the audio is a little bit better if you stand over here. Okay. And you can press the next button. Cool. Um, so I'm talking about everybody's favorite stuff, SAS topologies. We already sort of like touched on it a little bit, um, like during Alan's talk, talking about maybe like storing uh, the initiator in a VDEV property so we know like what that thing is actually connected to. Um, we talked about crazy device names and Linux, and we don't have to worry about that on the Lumos, uh, which is cool. So I'm glad I don't have your problems, but we'll talk about our problems instead. Um, so like, just to start out, like, I mean, we're like, this is sort of just like a throwaway slide. I don't know, like we all know that there, like there are ways to tolerate failures for like forecast failures, see them coming up and then avoiding failures. Um, you know, tolerance is pretty well understood. We have things like RAID um, in ZFS, not in ZFS. Um, forecasting, we talked a little bit about smart data earlier um, that can tell you like, uh, when a failure, the disk will predict when a failure might be coming uh, and like proactively notify the operating system or like using a CLI tool um, that that might happen. You know, ZFS, ReFS, ButterFS, they can all do these checksumming, recover from checksum errors on disks. Um, and we also have things like file link state error counters. I don't know how many folks are familiar with those. Yeah, yeah. So Richard, yeah, one, one person, all right? More, more probably. Um, but it'll tell you like, in, in the SAS fabric, like where errors might be coming from that aren't seen by disks yet, that like the SAS fa like topology is sort of hiding from either by like reissuing requests or whatever is going on in firmware land. Um, and then we also have avoidance. So like this would be doing something like creating a pool that um, takes into account the physical layout of disks in a system. So that maybe if you have a system with a bunch of disks on the front and a bunch of disks on the back and they're like connected, uh, like to the system in different ways, like through different cables, um, you can maybe create a pool that can tolerate a failure of one cable or something like that. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about this uh, later. But first we'll talk about uh, really bad stuff, which is uh, operator error and like how things can go totally wrong. Um, so like, let's just take a situation where the OS, uh, like ZFS identifies a bunch of checksum errors in a bunch of disks. Um, so the like ZFS uh, using the like Z or FMA and ZF, uh, Illumos will automatically swap in a hot spare. And the operator is going to be notified, hey, you should replace this disk because we found a bunch of checksum errors on it. So the operator goes and replaces a disk. Um, and while resilvering is going on, you don't really want to lose any more disks if you can help it. Um, but then more checksum errors happen on different disks, or maybe the disk that you just spared in. Um, so the operator replaces those disks too, and then you end up in the situation where you lost a bunch of data. Um, and like today, the tools don't really uh, say otherwise. Like if you go on Illumos and uh, like look at the uh, faults that are in the system, it will actually tell you like, hey, you should replace these disks. And like if an operator doesn't know any better, then they'll replace the disks. Um, but sometimes an operator does know better, and it's like even impossible to know what the right thing to do is. Um, and that may, like, hardware failure is, like, really complicated. Um, you have to take into account, like, where things are in the box. So this is just, like, a picture of a 4U box. Uh, this is, uh, like, a system that we use at Joyent. Um, like, the bomb is online. So if you want to check that out later, you can. Um, but this is, like, I don't know, like, how many folks have looked at hardware diagrams. But this is, so this is an HPA here. Um, and then we have a pair of, uh, like, back planes that just actually, like, plug into. Um, and in our bomb, what we do is we have like two cables that go to one expander and then two cables from that expander go to the rear expander. Um, so like the HPA in that architecture is a single point of failure. If you lose the HPA, all your disks basically just disappear. Um, or if there's like errors that only occur sometimes because the HPA is slowly failing, then it'll look like every disk in the system is throwing errors. Um, so if you think that doesn't actually happen, it totally does happen. So this is like, this is like an eye chart here, except um, it's, even if you could see it, it's basically unreadable. Um, it's like, <laughs> like we have, we, the system started out with just two hot spare disks and somehow we have like 10 of them now. Uh, we have 2,088 data errors um, and like everything is either resilvering or was removed, can't be found. Um, and like when you're an operator and you look at a pool like this, like what do you even do? <laughs> like, I mean, like do you just sort of like turn the box off and turn it on and hope it like recovers itself? Um, 
you know, in situations like this, this is when engineering gets called in to take a look. And uh, usually what we have to do is fire up this thing called LSI util. Like we use uh, LSI HBA, as I'm sure most people do. Um, and have any of you used LSI util? Yeah, okay. So if you use it, like you know the pain, like it, it's, uh, for me, it's like a super, super scary tool because like the options, like, First, it asks you, like, which HPA do you want to look at? And you're like, well, I didn't know there were, that there were two. Right? So I guess, like, the first one. And it's like, okay, well, do you want to, like, erase the bios? <laughs> <laughs> or, like what, like, what does reset target do? Like, does that make me lose all my data? So, like, you have to be really careful, like, when you're typing in the option on the keyboard, like, two zero, like, diagnostics. Like, I don't want to go up into RAID actions and turn, like, hardware RAID on accidentally. Um, so, like, eventually we can get these five link error counters. Um, so like each phi is uh, like a thing that, uh, like a port on the back plane that the disk plugs into. So uh, here in this example, there are no link errors, which is really good, but sometimes you'll see errors, like thousands of errors, um, but ZFS reports everything is okay. And you're like sort of questioning your entire like life and, and stuff. <laughs> um, so once we, once we have this magical phi number, then we have to like say that this first phi zero is throwing like a thousand errors. Uh, then we sort of have to figure out where that actually is in the system, which is like another menu option uh, in LSI util. And we have like even more cryptic data. Um, there's like a bunch of worldwide names here. Uh, so uh, these are HBA worldwide names. Uh, and you sort of have to do this mapping of, okay, well, phi zero had a bunch of errors. Uh, so I think that's this one here. You know, you're not really sure. Um, you're just like matching up numbers at this point. And um, thing like this is a really simple topology too. Like we have two HBAs and like, I don't know, like 16 disks or something. Uh, so like you can imagine like this 124 disk thing with like a fan art expander and like two edge expanders, you know, with a crap ton of disks and cables everywhere. Like how do you do this mapping with something like LSI util? Um, so the problems with understanding the SAS topology and like figuring out where errors are actually happening in hardware like the problems are that we have super dangerous tooling. LSI util is extremely frightening to use. It gets a bad day whenever you have to like copy LSI util on a machine and start running stuff. Um, so like really what we need to do is understand physical device layouts so that we can start to identify where things are going wrong. So really we need better tools. Um, and like that's hard to get right. So uh, multi-pathing people like I don't know how you live, but uh, like you know, probably have the most crazy SAS topologies on the planet. Uh, we use pretty simple ones, uh, but it's really hard to get this mapping of hardware topologies right because there are just so many different ways that are valid according to like the um, like SAS uh, like documentation. But it's uh, really confusing even to picture in your mind. Um, so we started some work in Illumos to sort of try to solve this problem. Uh, like the first thing we're trying to do is make things better for operators. Uh, so like. The first thing that uh, like Rob Johnson, a coworker of mine did was uh, implemented a prototype support for directed graphs in uh, FMA so that we can, uh, because like not all SAS topologies look like a tree, uh, like with this multi-pathing, like things can get really complicated. Um, and then we found this thing called SMHPA API. We like stumbled across it uh, looking at man pages. It's actually like this, Thing that allows uh, the operating system to write a, like support hardware, like vendor specific support in their HPA device drivers to like expose HPA specific information to the operating system. Um, it was written by SNEA folks a long time ago, but I don't know that it's like it's not maintained anymore. Um, but it's really useful because it gives you some information like you would get from LSI util um, about the HPA itself. Um, so we can get some information from SMHPA API. Uh, and then, like, what we did is we wrote a utility to run a bunch of SMP commands, uh, which is like the SCSI management pro or serial management protocol, SCSI management protocol, um, against any expanders that have SMP ports available. Um, so, that, like, doing that, we can sort of figure out uh, the worldwide names of disks that are behind a FI and then what those are attached to using worldwide names. Uh, and we can also get FI link error state counters through SMP. So now what we can do is we can link up matching w, uh, worldwide names in a directed graph, and then we can draw a really cool picture with it. Um, so that's Rob implemented this tool to convert directed graphs into like a really nice web page. Um, so 
hopefully, uh, oh yeah, so so this this first tool, SAS Topo, is it's like FM Topo on uh, Lumos, if you've ever used that, uh, crossed with like LSI util, so it gives you, um, like it'll print out paths from initiators to targets in a SAS topology, and you can like tell it to print out uh, device specific uh, properties like fire counters, the OS device names, chassis locations, that sort of stuff. Like uh, maybe the chassis location is like front disk zero. So then you can tell a DC operator, yeah, it's front disk zero that we need to replace. Um, and you can optionally serial serialize this uh, direct to graph into an XML document because XML is the um, format of the future. Uh, and it can handle 64 bit numbers, which things like JSON can't really. Um, so here's just like a sample output of SAS topo. Um, so this is a system. Uh, the, the first indication of it is just like no arguments. You can see that we've created a bunch of uh, like nodes in this directed graph. Uh, we have an initiator and we have a Y port that was identified that takes up eight pi. So this is like a cable going from the HPA to an expander. Um, we've discovered an expander node, uh, a port on the expander and a port uh, for a target. And this is the target, um, which is just a disk. Uh, and then here, like when, when we've discovered all the nodes, there's a lot more, uh, it'll print out at the end all the paths from initiator to target. Um, so now like we have a really good idea that we have an initiator, which is connected to an expander. Each of those has a port, this is a wide port. Um, and then uh, the expander port is connected to a target. And if we wanted some more detail, we could just run like the cap V flag and uh, we get some details on the port. So this will, like in the future, it's gonna include five link state error counters. Um, so maybe we'll see like a thousand errors on this, uh, on this target five, or this, uh, this port five. Um, and then this is the fMRI, if you wanna look up the resource um, in the SAS scheme. And then uh, here on the bottom, we have a target. So this super long thing is the uh, hardware component fMRI, which is used uh, to look up the actual physical device in uh, FM on the Lumos. And then uh, you can see that we discovered some information about the device, like where it is, slot zero, um, the manufacturer model number, serial number, all that sort of stuff. Uh, the second thing is that we wrote this tool to convert uh, that, like the XML output from the previous tool. And uh, this is written in Rust. And you can, like, it produces this website bundle, so you can actually open up this uh, topology in a web browser, and it makes it really easy to see how things are connected in a system, no matter how complex it is. Um, so here's a picture of that. You can't really see the words, which is unfortunate, but, um, like, this is the, the LSI util output I was showing you. There are two HBAs. So here's an HBA node. There's a second HBA node. And we can see all the, these are the targets here that we're attached to. So we can see each HBA is attached to uh, eight disks. And you can click on these and get more information about it. So we clicked on the HBA here. Uh, we, we have the hardware component fMRI, so we can look that up and uh, FM token if we want to. Uh, the model number, serial number, uh, device label, that sort of stuff. Um, and we'll be able to put like, uh, um, like filing state characters in these uh, port nodes as well. So in the future, like what we'll be able to do is if we find a port that's throwing a bunch of errors, we can like automatically color a box red or something. So then an operator can like quickly look at this and be like, oh, okay, like the HBA is throwing a thousand errors. This is red. And uh, like ZFS is also identifying checksum errors on all eight of these disks, but these eight disks are totally okay. So then we know that either the HBA has gone wrong or a cable has gone wrong. Um, so that's super useful. Um, and a slightly more complicated picture here, which is even harder to see. <laughs> um, so we have, in this case, a single HBA, which has a fan on expander that we clicked on. We have like the same hardware specific information over there in the corner. Um, and that has a bunch of disks attached to it. And then there's also another expander here that's attached to a few more disks. Um, so like here, maybe this expander is going bad and um, you know, ZFS has identified checksum errors on all these things, but all the other disks are okay. Um, so that, like this, these, even having like trivial tools like this, if you guys have had to like dive into LSI util before, this is like a game changer, at least in my opinion. Um, so yeah, like I said, 
Our short-term goals are just to have better tooling for our operators. Longer term, though, um, since Lumos has uh, FMA, like really good fault management uh, for hardware, we would like to like enhance FMA to actually provide more targeted diagnoses when things start going wrong in the chassis. Uh, so uh, maybe that would be like, look like maybe ZFS stops swapping in disks all the time when it sees checksum errors. Um, and we also want to be able to make better pools because I don't know about you guys, but like when I make a pool, I'll just go like Z pool create like mirror or grade Z1, like STA, STB, STC, STD, without really taking into account where the disks actually are, like what the fault domains are. Um, so that's really what we'd like to do with this work. Um, yeah, I think that's all that I have, but if you folks have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Here's some pointers. Yep. Yeah, I know you mentioned uh, you know, future work, CFS retard, uh, to make it better. Have you had any prototype work on that? Uh, I mean, what can you do when you have this big page of everything, you know, detecting errors? Uh, have any kind of like yeah, ideas of how you make it better? Yeah, so uh, the question was like, how can we improve the retire agent with this information? Uh, do we have any prototype? We don't have any prototype code for that. Um, but one thing that we were thinking is we could actually, uh, like in this, in these like device specific properties, we could like mark this disk as being uh, like having, being part of pool GUID whatever with VDEV GUID whatever. So then uh, what we can do is in the retire agent sort of look up in the SAS topology that node to see if there's anything along the line that has a bunch of errors and sort of go from there. Yeah. Hmm? Do you think that you could take the logic of drawing this and kind of pare it down to the error case and make an ASCII art output that could eventually be the part of some sort of command line diagnostic where it shows you, you know, right now ZFS tells you that the disk has checked some errors, but if you could roll that command up and show the errors on the full path, because you're generating that, that long path string, and I'm just wondering do you, how feasible is that or is that a pipe dream? Yeah, I mean, I think that we could certainly do stuff like that. Um, like you can look up any of these individual nodes just by using the fMRI. Um, so you could conceivably do something like that in like a Z pull output or like a fMADM faulty on any else. Um, ASCII art, like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not an ASCII art person, but like you could probably do, probably make some cool. Lines and boxes. Yeah. Great. Yeah, well, thank you, everybody.